ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم اما بعد روى البخاري رحمه الله من حديث عائشة رضي الله عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله أمر بالرفق في الأمور كلها. إمام بخاري رحمه الله reported that عائشة رضي الله عنها reported that Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah سبحانه وتعالى commands kindness and easiness in all affairs. Everything you do, to approach it in a kind way. Whatever you can accomplish with your rudeness, with your power, with your bad treatment or bad language, you can accomplish it in a good way, in a better way, and a rewarding way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said that, he did not exclude anything. He said, fil umuri kulliyam, in all your affairs. When you deal with your children, kindness. Even when you're angry, you can be angry and still kind. And by the way, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described people, the righteous one, wal kaadhimin al ghayb the person when he controls his anger, it means that he's a real man. Because that means this anger that he can accomplish so many things that he may like to do, he is able to contain it in him and not fulfill what he wants to do. That's power. That's faith. That's why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said when he describes the power of a muscular person and the power of a person with faith. قَالَ لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالسُّرْعَةِ إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ أَلَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عَنْدَ الْغَضَبِ The real tough person is not the one who outpowers people, wrestles down people. The one who is really powerful is the one who can control his anger. Because that takes a man. Anyone can behave radically or irrationally when he's angry. Anyone can cuss and curse and do everything and unfortunately some people excuse them. You're not excused. When you're angry you're not excused. We cannot reward wrong with wrong. To forgive someone, say oh forgive him, he, he gets angry all the time, oh he is uh, really kind inside but, but, no. You behave bad, you acted bad and you deserve to be treated on that the same way. So all the teachings in our faith directs us to control our anger and to be kind with one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Amr birrif, to be kind in all affairs. When you deal with your wife, you can criticize and you can talk nicely in a kind way. And you get the same thing and you get it in a better way. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala rewards with kindness a lot more than what He rewards with harshness. On top of that, hasanat, the other reward. So if you cannot be kind to your wife, for instance, and the wife cannot behave kind, with kindness toward her husband, I don't know to who you're going to be kind. Yani when, when, when someone taking care of you, raising your children, guarding everything that you have. You're not going to be kind to that person. Who are you going to be kind to? And when someone or the wife supporting you, working for you, suffering for you, to provide for you, to give for you, to protect you, you cannot be kind to him. I don't know who you're going to be kind to. That's why a lot of people say when, they want, when you want to check a man and see how good his manners are, ask his wife, don't ask anyone else, because she's the one who deals with him all the time. If your wife says that 
you have ill manners, you do for the most part. I'm not talking to ask her when you're angry or when she is angry or when there's a problem, no. Or just a peaceful situation, a woman identifies her husband as kind, then he is kind. So Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said this hadith, but look at it from perspective of da'wah. This is our concern all the time, is how you deal with people when they are deviating, how you deal with people when they are not following what you're following. You know, I would just finish telling the girls a story about a true love story about Zainab anha, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and her husband Abu al-As. For years, 20 years, she fulfilled her promise to him to do everything to help him, even though he was a disbeliever. And he rejected Islam every time she asked him. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him back. He was captured by the Muslim. She ransomed him. He came running from the disbelievers. She put him under her protection with the permission, of course, of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And look at him as a disbeliever. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the, when, the, when the ayat was revealed that a Muslim woman cannot marry a non-Muslim man, he was captured, Abu al-As. He ransomed him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for free with the permission of the believers too. Yes, he is the leader, but he still takes permission and reconciliates and he asked and uh, make sure I would be rest of the believers so, sallallahu alayhi wa So when he let him go, he whispered to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded me to separate between a believing woman and an unbelieving man. Would you please send my daughter back to me? She was in Mecca still. A disbeliever, his wife, he has a son and a daughter from her living with her, someone coming to tell him, bring my daughter back. He doesn't believe in him. And subhanAllah, he told him, Af'al, I will. And he sent Zainab radiallahu anha. He was a disbeliever, but look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded him. He got captured again with all of his money and everything. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the believer sent him back with all of his money, even though they were supposed to take everything because the disbelievers took everything there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger told his daughter Zainab to take care of him. He said, this is your cousin and he is the father of your children, but don't get near him because he is not her husband anymore. And he did not even stay. She invited him to Islam again and he said no. She did not question, she did not fight, he did not fight. He did, it was just a simple, would you accept Islam? She told him one question. She said, you just let us go like that. We were that unimportant to you. Would you accept Islam again? He said, no. She said, okay. And he left. He left, he delivered everything back and he told the people, anything you need from me, no, you have fulfilled your promises. You gave us the money back and everything. He said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. In Mecca. And he came back to Medina. Look at the travel, look at the distances. This is to tell women sometimes men have certain plans and certain things in their mind. They don't want to disclose it. It's not fitting for a man to disclose it. When, when, when Zainab accepted Islam and she told her husband he was traveling when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became a prophet. She told him about that. Look at the first thing he told her. She told him, I'm not the only one who accepted Islam. Abu Bakr Siddiq accepted Islam. Uthman ibn Affan accepted. Ali ibn Abi Talib accepted. My mother accepted. My brothers accepted. Because he told her, why don't you consult me with me? Why don't you tell me? She told him, I'm not the only one and I'm not gonna disbelieve my dad. You know he is a trustworthy. He said, yes, your dad is trustworthy. As for me, I'm not going to make or to allow someone to say Abu al-As laid down his forefathers for the obedience of his wife. Yes, I guarantee you, brothers, if someone tells you you are busy to your wife, you know what busy is, right? Busy is a, a cat. 
Even, <laughs> it doesn't matter, even if you are, you won't like it. No one would come and say, yes I am, and I'm proud of it. It's manhood, it's, 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 this is how, you know, he said, I'm not going to do that, even though, yes, I love you, yes, I do this, but I won't do that. But look at the reward. Eventually he came back to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, yesterday I came and you put me under your protection as a disbeliever. Today I'm going to join you as a believer. Allah, look at the beauty. Then he told him, O oh, Prophet of Allah, would you allow me to get my wife back? Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told him, let's go. He knocked at the door of Zainab radiallahu anha. Look at the etiquettes, look at the manners, look at the shyness, look at the modesty, look at the beauty of Islam. He knocked at the door, he said, this is your cousin coming to ask your hand back again. Would you accept? Her face became red and she smiled. Already married to the man, lived with the man, had children from the man, and yet when it comes to subjects like that, shyness would not allow her to say yes. This is what we call modesty that can never result with mixing. You can never have that when you have men and women just mingle and sit and talk just like that. You will never have it. You can call for it all you want unless it is done with restrictions and limits for men and women how to mix and how to interact, it will never happen. But he came back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded her with her patience. Six years, people coming to ask her hand and what she was doing, no, 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 hoping that her husband would come. He told her in the beginning, would you, for, would you understand my excuse? Which is like, I don't want to become a Muslim because I don't want somebody to say so and so about me. She said, if I don't, who is going to accept? I will help you find the truth as long as I live. She helped him over 20 years fulfilling that until he became Muslim. One year she died after him, and guess what happened? He told Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu from as much he cried. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was petting him like a little baby trying to comfort him, crying on her. And he told him, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I cannot live, I cannot see happiness in this life after Zainab. One year after that he died. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with her <coughs> kindness brought him back to her. And he's going to be her husband in Jannah, radiallahu anhum. And with his kindness and his control and all that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded him to come back as a Muslim. Imagine if she just ignored him when he was captured. She ransomed him with the necklace of her mother. And you know who her mother was? Khadija radiallahu anha. And you know who's Khadija? <laughs> Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when he saw the necklace, he was crying, he started crying. He said, who is this? For, because he doesn't know. He was ransomed and receiving for ransom. They said, this is to ransom Abu al-As. <laughs> Boom, immediately. That's the necklace of Khadija. He couldn't control himself. This is the love of Khadija in the heart of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, And this is the love of Zainab to Abu al-As. She gave that necklace. She knows the value of it. And she knows the value of it to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and she knows he's going to see it, but her love to her husband and her promise to her husband made her do the same. Look at the fruit. Saved her husband from hellfire. And look at the fruit he got his wife, the most beloved, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi all because of kindness. So when you talk about kindness and da'wah, you need to deal with people who are far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with more kindness, not with less. If you see a disobedient person, you don't just let him go to hell, oh, he's a drug addict. Oh, great, so the drug addict will let him just go to hell, and the one who doesn't have drugs will just gather him and put him under our umbrella. This is like when one person told me when I was given the lecture Islam for tears, at uh, one point he said, most of the people who come to your lecture are drug dealers. 
I said, if I can convince a drug dealer to come and sit in my lecture and leave his drugs and leave his fun times and all that, isn't that what we're looking for? Why you want to look, invite you to the dawah, to the, to the masjid and to the talk? This is the level of understanding for people and this is the level of caring for people who are disobedient. It was said to one of the righteous predecessors, if you see someone in a hole, fell in a hole, what would you do? He said, I'll help him out. He said, your brother who is disobedient, he's falling in hell. He's more deserving of helping him than someone in a little hole to help him there. And you deal the same thing with emergencies. When you go to an emergency room, who is treated first? The one who just have a cut or the one fix it to die? Fix it to die. So kindness. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّلْ غَلِيلَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِ Had it been for your kindness, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then all the people will disperse from around. Yani had it Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was fulfilling what he's saying, we won't be here. Because the Sahaba will not be there. And that's how you attract people. By being kind, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people who are kind. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us always care for the people and care for one another. And call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best way that pleases Him. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruk wa natubu alayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shumul <laughs> <laughs>